So it's not about picking science or faith, but seeing how they both give us valuable insights into the world. Precisely. When we hold those two perspectives together, we get a richer, more complete view of reality. We can appreciate- Welcome back to Light of Reflection. In this second part of our series about existence of God, we tackle one of the toughest questions about faith. Why does suffering exist if God is all loving? We're diving into centuries old debates on free will, exploring how different beliefs see the role of pain and purpose. From the mystery of consciousness to near-death experiences that hint at something beyond, we'll look at perspectives that bring hope in dark times. Ready to explore faith from another angle? Let's Welcome back to our deep dive. Last time we got into some pretty wild stuff. The precision of the universe, the idea of miracles, and those mysteries of consciousness. Yeah, it was mind-blowing. But, you know, thinking about a divine creator also brings up some tough questions. For sure. Like, if God's all-loving and all-powerful, why is there so much suffering? That's the age-old question, isn't it? Trying to understand how a good God and bad things can exist together. It's called theodicy. Philosophers and theologians have been debating it for centuries. Yeah, no easy answers there. It really makes you wonder, if God's supposed to be watching over us, why do bad things happen to good people, to innocent kids? Those are heavy questions, and it's important to acknowledge that pain, the real suffering people go through, maybe by looking at it from different angles, we can understand how faith and suffering can exist side by side. Okay, I'm willing to hear different perspectives. Yeah. But where do we even start with something this complicated? Well, one way is to think about free will. Many religions teach that humans have the choice to do good or bad, and with that choice comes the possibility of both good and bad outcomes. So you're saying it's not God directly causing the suffering, but that our own choices, plus all the complicated stuff in the world, create these situations. That's one way to see it. Imagine a parent teaching their kid to ride a bike. The parent can guide and help, but the kid has to learn balance on their own. There will be falls, but that's how they learn. I get the analogy. So are you saying that suffering is some kind of cosmic lesson, a way for our souls to grow and develop? It's worth thinking about. In a lot of religions, suffering isn't seen as punishment, but more like a test, a chance to build character, things like compassion, resilience, faith. Okay, but what about people who suffer through no fault of their own, like victims of natural disasters or violence? How does free will explain that? That's where the idea of a bigger plan, a divine plan, comes in. Some people believe God lets suffering happen as part of a bigger design that we just can't fully understand. You mean like we don't have the whole picture? Right. Like watching a movie, we only see a little bit at a time. We might question why characters do certain things or where the plot's going. But the director has a vision for the whole story that we don't see yet. So it's about trusting that there's a bigger picture, even if we don't get it. That takes a lot of faith. It does. It's about acknowledging that there are mysteries we may never fully understand, but believing that even in the midst of suffering, there's still purpose, still meaning. That's tough, but I can see how it might bring comfort and hope during hard times. And it's important to remember that different religions have different ways of understanding suffering and God's role. Like in Christianity, suffering is often connected to the idea of redemption. Jesus suffering on the cross is seen as a sacrifice for humanity, showing God's love. So it's like God under you. Exactly. And in Buddhism, suffering seen as just a part of life, coming from our desires and the fact that everything changes. Enlightenment means understanding and overcoming the things that cause us to suffer. So many different ways to look at this whole suffering thing. That's right. And while these views might be different, they often agree that suffering isn't pointless. It can have a purpose in our spiritual growth. Okay, so we've talked about suffering. But what about people who say there's just no scientific proof for God? How can you have faith when science can't prove it? That's where it's super important to understand what science can and can't do. Science is amazing at explaining the natural world, but it can't answer questions about meaning or purpose. It can't prove or disprove God because that question goes beyond what we can observe with our senses. It's like trying to measure love with a ruler. You can see the physical signs like a fast heartbeat or dilated pupils, but you can't actually measure the feeling itself. Exactly. Science deals with the how of the universe, while faith grapples with the why. They're just different ways of understanding things, different paths to the same truth. So it's not about picking science or faith, but seeing how they both give us valuable insights into the world. Precisely. 
When we hold those two perspectives together, we get a richer, more complete view of reality. We can appreciate amazing scientific discoveries while also acknowledging there are things we still don't understand. Speaking of things we don't understand, remember we talked about near-death experiences last time. Those stories are so fascinating. People seeing a bright light, feeling peace, even talking to loved ones who've passed away. It's like getting a peek behind the curtain of what comes after this life. Near-death experiences really make you think about consciousness and the possibility of an afterlife. Some try to explain them as hallucinations or something happening in the brain, but the fact that people from all over the world report similar things is pretty striking. Yeah, it's hard to say it's just random brain activity when so many people describe the same experience. Do you think those stories are evidence for God? It's tough to say for sure. These experiences are personal and we can't really study them scientifically. But they do raise big questions about consciousness, the idea that it might be separate from the body. And that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, about the soul or spirit, right? right. If consciousness can survive death. It opens up a whole new way of thinking about things. Absolutely. It challenges the idea that we're just biological machines and suggests there might be a spiritual side to us. Wow, we've covered some deep stuff today. Suffering, free will, the limits of science, even near-death experiences. I'm sensing a theme here. It's about using both reason and faith to understand these big questions. You got it. It's about knowing we don't have all the answers, but being open to different ideas and being okay with the mystery of it all. So what other mysteries await us in the final part of our deep dive? We still have some exciting things to explore. Next time, we'll dive into some of the classic philosophical arguments for God's existence, arguments that have been debated for centuries and still hold weight today. I'm ready for more mind-bending stuff. Listeners, join us for the final part as we wrap up our search for evidence for God's existence. It's going to be a wild ride. 